Salutations, friends and strangers of the interwebs. Welcome back to the channel, Stevie Wonder Woman. I am said Stevie. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about... Uh, we're not going to be talking about anything. I'm going to be talking about something. I'm talking about myself in the third person now, the royal we. I'm going to be talking about my love for the Demco 8020.5. So... Um, I'm going to be doing a couple things in this video. I'm going to be skipping around, uh, talking, the, you'll find out why, but, uh, there's going to be some disassembly and some installations, and this is going to be a different, a uh, little bit of a different video for me. Follow along, folks. Anyway, so here we have a Demco 8020.5. Uh, if you're not familiar, this is based on the Demco 8020, which is a, it's a big knife. This is a scaled down, more budget friendly version of it. This one that I'm holding right here has been modded. And, um, so, but I have an unmodded one. You'll see why. So, this one right here specifically is in the Shark's Foot configur config Configuration configuration shark's foot not sheep's foot shark's foot so uh this also comes in a clip point foreshadowing this knife is fantastic uh i recently posted a video that i made a while ago um talking about some of the uh, things that i really like about this and um you know when i first got this knife i didn't think i was gonna like it but it really grew on me enough to where i've modded it and I'm keeping it. But this knife is... The fidget factor for this knife is off the hook. So, um... It does have... Uh, so, one of the things about uh, the 8020 and the 8020.5 is it's got the, sh the shark lock. So, it doesn't have a very good detent be because it's got this as the, uh, the, the, the locking mechanism. In fact, there is no detent on this at all. But in order to uh, deploy this, uh, so you can see it does have thumb studs, and it also has uh, the finger uh, hole there. So you can thumb flick that, you can middle finger flick it, both from the studs, you can middle finger flick it from the hole, you can thumb flick it from the hole, and then you can just deploy it using the shark lock. So you can see, once you disengage the uh, lock there, it's just, it, it drops shut, right? So the fidget factor on this thing is just off the hook. But it's more than just that. It's a very functional knife. Um, the ergos on this, you can see, uh, it's got uh, this, that, the way the handle is cut out works as a choil. So you can get choked up on this really well, and you can see how much knife I got sticking out there. But even if you're back here, you can kind of, so when you're choked up, it does have some nice jimping up on top of the blade. So you can, you know, you can you can be nice and choked up there. And it feels really good. And if you're back here, you can kind of use the uh, shark lock as a thumb ramp. And, you know, it's, it's a good slicer. Um, feels really good in hand. Not great in hand back here, but good. Up here, though, it feels just fine. So, the Ergos are amazing. The blade is made out of Os10A, which I don't know enough about um, to know if that's a great steel or not. I think it is. It's better than Os8, right? Um, which is more of a budget uh, steel. Um, but Os10 is good to go as far as I'm concerned. This is a very uh, slicey knife. Let's see if I can get some printer paper out here real quick. So, just doing the uh, the, the old cut test on it. You know, um, it slices. Well, that's me. It's sharp, and I've had this for a while, and it's been put through the. It's been put to task, and it, it's still slicing really well. I haven't distilled the factory edge on it, but again. Very good knife, but there are, were some flaws to it, um, and here's where I'll start pointing out the flaws. So, but I liked this knife so much that 
as I said, for the foreshadowing, I picked up the other variant. This is the clip point variant. I've had modded this in a little bit in the past, but I've returned it to its stock configuration so we can go over everything. So the main reason um, I did the mods to the, uh, the shark's foot, you can see them there. They are extremely similar except for the, the blades, right? So the scales that it comes with is the, these FR, they're FRN, textured FRN. Um, what's FRN? I think it's fiber reinforced nylon. I think that's what it is. Fancy plastic, as far as I'm concerned. These are very cheap feeling scales on it. And then also that pocket clip, the stock pocket clip. So this has been modded, like I said, this has, uh, I put scales from uh, Carbidize on Instagram, uh, made some black frag pattern linen micarta uh, uh, scales for this. And Lynch Northwest makes a deep carry clip for this. So I put that on there. That was the main thing. Look at the difference between those clips. Not good. Um, so the scales and the clip were the two downsides. And I'm going to show you the difference between the way these carry with the different clips. So I got my Steel Capital uh, knife roll uh, back pocket, Hank. So we're going to first slip in the standard. This is so much easier to do when I face myself and then just turn it around. So it goes in and out of pocket just fine. And then you got that sticking out of there. When you put one of Lynch Northwest deep carry clips on it, it becomes ultra deep carry. I mean, look at that. It disappears in your pocket. You can't see the knife at all. So it's worth the upgrade. And like I said, the uh, the scales are just not to be desired, in my opinion. Maybe you'd like them. I don't know. I, if you're going to get one of these, try them out before you do anything. But again, not my the FRN is just not my favorite. And I like this knife enough to where it's worth modding for me. So these are, I think, over $140. Uh, scales are going to set you back uh, 70-ish bucks. So that's a $210 knife at that point. And then the pocket clip's going to set you back another 20 That's a $230 knife. I think that this is a well worth $230 knife, as is in this configuration. I can't keep things stock. I have to take it up a notch, right? That's just me. I like to mod my knives. I like to make them my own. So, um, I picked up another uh, Lynch Northwest uh, deep carry clip for this. And I reached back out to the aforementioned Carbidize on uh, Instagram. And I got him to make me these White Storm Fat Carbon Scales. So that's what we're going to do next. I am going to switch to a top-down view. Ooh. I'm going to switch to a top-down view. And I'm going to do a disassembly on this. I'm going to add the uh, carbidized scales and the Lynch Northwest clip that I got for it. So um, that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to switch to the top-down view. And then um, we'll, uh, I'll, I'll come back uh, to the front-facing and we'll give the final thoughts on it. So by the magic of editing, bear with me. Okay, so here we are with the top-down view, and I'm basically just going to do uh, an unboxing of it. So, um, here we go. Uh, this is obviously the box that the uh, Demco 80 20.5 comes in. Uh, whether you have the clip point or the shark's foot, uh, it comes with the shark's foot uh, profile on it. Uh, pretty nice box. Uh, you got Demco knives. 80 20.5 shark lock technology shark lock they are really marketing that shark lock 
So um, as we pull the top off of the box, uh, you do get another uh, peek at the shark lock. A nice uh, sticker there. And then the pouch uh, that it comes with uh, has this uh, shark lock uh, patch attached to it. And um, pretty nice uh, case here that uh, includes a Demco uh, wiping cloth. The knife, obviously. And then the other cool thing that they do is they include a, a left-handed, uh, left-side carry uh, pocket clip. So if you are a lefty and you want to configure this for a uh, left-handed configuration, uh, you can do so. But I'm not going to be using that, so I'm going to put it back away. And, uh, yeah, let's just get into uh, the disassembly of this. So, um... It's fairly straightforward, but there are, uh, I've taken it apart a few times. Um, well, I've taken uh, this one apart uh, a few times to uh, put on the scales here. So I'm fairly familiar with this knife. Watch a disassembly uh, before getting into this because, uh, well, I mean, maybe you're brave enough and you just want to dive right in. But there are a couple of things I'm going to point out uh, along the way. I did not watch a disassembly the first time I took this apart. And, um... I'll, well, a couple of things I'll point out again. So, uh, you are going to need a T6, uh, Torx uh, T6, and uh, for all the uh, body screws, there are three on one side, three on the other, uh, two that hold in the pocket clip, and then another one there. Uh, and then it is a T10 for the uh, pivot. So, um, I'm going to start by removing all the body screws. And then I'll remove the pivot last. So, um, again, uh, these scales, as you can see a little bit uh, closer up, um, like I said, these are FRN, uh, which I think I called uh, fancy plastic. And they're, I don't know, maybe I'm just too picky, but they're just, they're not great in my opinion. So that's why, um, try not to give you guys such a... Uh, close-up of my hairy ass hands there um but yeah so let's get the pocket clip off of there the body screw there and let's see all right you give him a grief pocket clip you give him the grief these are T6, uh, as I pointed out, but they are actually pretty good T6 screws, um, if that's there's such a thing. Um, these do have at least a deep socket to them, so they, uh, I don't think they're going to strip very easily. All right, so we got the body screws all removed. Now let's remove the uh, T10 pivot. And now uh, we can start uh, taking off the top scale there which uh, reveals the liner. Um, before you just go popping this liner off, know that uh, because of the shark lock uh, there, that's on a spring. So as soon as I pop this off, it's gonna expose the spring. And if you're not careful, you can launch the spring into outer space and like I did the very first time, and then you have to search for a spring. So be careful, have it, uh, wear safety glasses, folks. I wear nerdy glasses, so I don't have to worry about it. Oh, did I shoot it? Did it, did it launch? It did. Uh, see? It popped out. So I'm not as careful uh, as I said to be, but at least it didn't go flying. But that's what you want to uh, be looking out for. So um, I'll try to put this back together the way it should have, so you can see an actual, uh, the way it's supposed to look there. Um... You would typically see when you pop that liner off, that's how it's going to look. It's going to uh, be exposed like this. So um, what you want to do if it doesn't go flying out is literally just put your finger over it. And that'll allow the spring to uh, be safely removed. Now you can pop off the um, blade and the bearing. Pop off the shark lock. Uh, you can pull off the uh, backspacer. There are um, these little barrels in the uh, barrel spacers in the backspacer that can be a pain in the butt if they slip out. 
They are also uh, D-shaped, so they go in a specific way. They're tiny little things, and I got big old sausage fingers, so I try to keep that in there as much as possible. Um, then you have uh, two of the spacer uh, barrel spacers there. I don't. I think they're called barrel spacers. I don't know. Um, that uh, put the shark lock into place there. Uh, then you have the stop pin, so you can go ahead and remove those. You can um, pop out the other bearing there. And these are just uh, generic uh, bearings. I think they are uh, six millimeter bearings and um, both uh, Gillian and Skiff make replacement bearings. I don't think I'm interested in getting replacement bearings for these because I think the fit and finish is good enough on this. And I, you know, um, maybe I will one day, but right now I'm not interested in replacing the bearings on these. So now you can pop the pivot out the backside. That's a D-shaped uh, pivot. We'll have to keep that in mind when we put this back together. Um, and now uh, we can say, C'est la vie to the scales. Uh, C'est la vie, go the old scales. It goes to show you never can tell. Get rid of those. Um, I'll keep them, but uh, yeah. Don't need them anymore. Uh, they have fulfilled their purpose because... Like I said, we are going to install these awesome, awesome White Storm Fat Carbon Scales from Carbidize. All right, so um, we may as well, while I have this disassembled, give it a quick wipe down. Um, it's not too dirty, so, well, you know what? I'm just going to give everything a quick little spritz. So, um, well, there went those pieces to the backspacer that I said to be careful with. Um, I just spray, uh, down the, uh, uh, bearing, uh, pockets there in both sides of the blade. That's really all I think needs to be cleaned there. So I'm going to wipe that off, wipe that off, wipe that off. And now we can start uh, reassembly. So uh, we'll start with the, uh, this will eventually be the show scale. Um, no, this is the pocket clip scale. That's what we need to start with, though. So uh, pop the pivot back in. And now uh, that D-shaped pivot has to line up with the liner. The other thing you want to be cognizant of is that this pivot needs to sit flush. So when you're reassembling it, it is important that um, it doesn't slip out and you try to reassemble it with it slipped out. We'll double check that as we go. Um, so let's start by putting the backspacer back in place there. Again, my sausage fingers. I've done this enough to where I shouldn't take too long for me to do all right, so we got the backspacer in uh, place. Let's go ahead and put the first barrel spacer in place, the second barrel spacer in place, and our stop pin. And how about a couple uh, dabs of some fumble fingers, some uh, KPL pivot lube. Knife pivot lube. I'm literally just going to put one little uh, drop there. Um, should probably wipe off the bearings too. Wipe off the bearings. Um, I put the open side of the generic bearings towards the liner and the caged side towards the knife. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, if you do it differently, uh, you do you. That's fine. I don't think it makes too much of a difference, to be honest with you. Um, okay, uh, then I'm going to give just a couple dabs on there. Just just barely any. Barely any. Uh, put the knife on there, or the blade on there. That's going to allow you to put this. All right. All right, so now it's ready to accept the spring. Ah. Dang it. All right, we lost man overboard. All 
Okay. So now, um, with everything in a uh, position like so, oh, let's give a dab on there. That's probably too much. Wipe that off. I'm going to put the bearing on there. All right. So the way I like to do this to put it back in is to keep your finger pressed against the uh, shark walk so it can't move. It doesn't matter. Uh, this is this sh uh, spring is shaped both or uh, the same on both sides there, so it doesn't matter which end goes where. And then you just carefully. Whoops! Don't roll away on me. There it is. It's back in position. So now, as long as you're careful and it doesn't launch back out, we're good. Please don't do that. Please don't do that. Um, I'm going to put. Another little dab of KPL on the bearing uh, pocket there. And now, this should all line up like so. Let's make sure that that pivot, it's not, see? The pivot slipped out just ever so slightly. So, I'm going to back up. I'm going to back up. Try to be careful. push that pivot flush again and it is okay so i'm gonna pinch it like so now Ooh, the luminous is on all right i'm, I'm putting pressure on that pivot from the back side so it doesn't slip back out so now we are good there now i'm gonna take this uh scale pop that into place and then just so that pivot doesn't pop back out, I am going to put, uh, the, I'm going to snug the pivot up and then we will adjust again later. All right, so I got that snug down. You can see that that, uh, the backside of the pivot is flush with the scale, which is what you want. So now, uh, let's assemble, uh, the front side, uh, there before we put on the pocket clip. So, um, I'm not going to tighten, uh, everything down until we do final, uh, the final check and make sure that the blade is centered and everything. All right. Now, um, we can also say c'est la vie to the old clip. Um, but before, uh, let me just pop this, uh, screw in there. And now we will get out our uh, lynch clip. Look at that. It's got my name on it. Uh, that's because uh, this was originally a uh, Blade HQ exclusive. I reached out to Casey Lynch directly and said, Hey, I'm going to be in the area uh, in Spokane. Can I stop by the shop? And when I do, if you have a, a Demco clip uh, laying around, I'd love to pick one up. Guess what? He said he had one for me. So, um... I stopped by, and I got a couple of things, but, uh, yeah, I got, um, the clip on there, and if you've ever ordered from, uh, Lynch Northwest, uh, you always get, um, uh, a handwritten note from, uh, Casey, uh, he signs them, puts this little character on it. Since I started ordering, uh, from Lynch Northwest, he noticed that I'm in Washington, and so I get an extra personalized, uh, thanks Stevie for your Washington support, so that's always awesome. Uh, we got the clip there, and then uh, some. Uh, they got some really nice stickers that are always included. So here is the uh, clip. Now we're just going to take our clip screws. I'm going to go in with the back one first. Whoops, a doodle. All right, let's try to get that in there. And let's do it like this. There we go. That was much easier, Stevie. Much easier. All right. Let's get that lined up. Insert it like so. Okay. So now I'm going to start going uh, front to back, side to side, uh, and tightening up all the... Well, no. Let's check the uh, blade first. So I snugged that pivot down pretty good. Um, to make sure it was uh, captured properly. So let's back that off. 
And let's uh, check centering. Centering is right on. A little bit of blade play, so we know we need to uh, snug it down just a little bit more. A little bit more. That's money. That's money right there. So now let's... Um, I'll, lock, I'll Loctite this. Well, let's just Loctite it in right now. What the hey? What the hell? I'm going to back this pivot out, actually. Now, I use Loctite on a stick. Loctite on a stick. And I'm just going to give a little bit, just a little dab will do you. And I'll let this sit in here overnight. Okay, so no blade play. Action seems good. We're centered. Let's snug up the uh, uh, body screws. So um, back on both sides. Middle on both sides. Front on both sides. Whoops. So that backspacer is just going to stay the plain Jane Grey. I don't think, well, I don't know if Carbidize makes backspacers for them or not. I never asked him about that. I think it looks okay, though, with just the plain Jane that it comes with. So, all right, we got everything snug down. We got no blade play. Action is wicked. Ugh. Wicked action there. Wicked action. So there we go. Um, all right. Let me put the cat back on the Loctite or else it's going to uh, dry out. Put the KPL away. Put all those back. All right. So there we go. We got the drop point with the carbonized fat carbon. Arctic uh, white storm fat carbon. And we have the uh, carbonized black linen frag pattern micarta scales on the shark's foot so there you go all right so uh we're done there that's all for the top down uh let me um switch back up and take another look at you guys and wrap it up all right folks so uh there you have it as i was just showing you the demco 80 20.5 shark's foot in frag pattern black linen micarta from carbidize and the drop point or clip point i'm sorry clip point 80 20.5 wearing white storm fat carbon uh carbidize scales uh both now have deep carry lynch clips on them and these knives are fantastic. Look at that. I've never seen um, Lefty EDC's take on the 20.5. I know he's got some uh, Arctic Storm uh, or some Fat Carbon for his. Um, but I've never actually watched uh, one of his videos on the 80-20.5. I have to imagine he would like this. This is a very left-handed friendly knife. I'm not left-handed, and I can fidget with this thing no problem left-handed. So, I'll have to go back and watch that, see what uh, he has to think. But, um, yeah, uh, these are fantastic knives. I love them both. Um, if I had to pick, I might mess around and swap scales just to see uh, how one blade looks with one set of scales and whatnot. Um, I want to keep both of these. I don't have, I don't need to keep them both, but I want them both. What to do, what to do, what to do. All right, you guys, how about this? Um, look, I'm probably going to keep both of these for a while, but what's your favorite? Do you like the, uh, Arctic Storm? Or I keep saying Arctic Storm. The White Storm, uh, Fat Carbon? Or do you like the, uh, Frag Pattern Black Linen Micarta better? Do you think I should do a scale swap? Or a blade swap, I guess, and see what one looks, you know, uh, with the other? I don't know. Let me know in the comments uh, which uh, which one's your favorite. 
Um, as it stands right now, man, I really like this this fat carbon. Until you see fat carbon in person, you can't really appreciate it. You just can't. And um, yeah, I don't know. We'll see. But uh, that's it, guys and gals. Demco 8020.5s with, uh, I don't know if I'm the only one that has them in these configurations, but uh, as far as I'm concerned, these have been personalized to uh, my specific taste. And so um, I'm sure there's someone else out there that's got these, though. I can't be that uh, unique, but anyway, I really dig them. Um, hope this turns out. Uh, I'm going to edit uh, some things uh, together. Haven't done that for a little while, so um, yeah, hopefully uh, that all turns out and this wasn't a big old waste of time. Appreciate uh, each and every one of you uh, that uh, tune in uh, to the channel all the time. Um, definitely got some regulars I, that I really do appreciate. I got uh, some other stuff that I'm thinking about uh, trying to get done. I want to film a uh, top knives of 2021 um, coming up on the end of 2021. And I don't know if I have any more knives coming in before the end of the month. Today's the 30th. Today's the last day of November. I'm sure I have something coming in. I don't know. Ooh, if the Thick Boys, uh, the EMP EDC uh, Thick Boy, I'll definitely probably have before the end of the year. So who knows? Anyway. I appreciate, uh, like I said, I appreciate everyone tuning in. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a thumbs down if you didn't like it. Yeah, leave me some comments. Uh, let's have a discussion. And until I figure out what the next one, next, next, the next one going to be. Until I figure out what the next one going to be. What was that? Until I have figured out what the next video I'm going to film for you fine folks is going to be i'll talk to you soon uh hit me up on instagram uh i'm always active on there and um or again leave me a comment stop rambling just end the video talk to you guys uh next time <laughs>